Ladies and gentlemen, good day and welcome to the Borosil Limited Q1 FY24 earnings conference call hosted by Monarch Networth Capital. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen-only mode. There will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference, please signal an operator by pressing star and then zero on your touchtone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Rahul Dani from Monarch Network Capital. Thank you and over to you, sir. Yeah, hi, thank you, Dovin. Good afternoon, everyone. On behalf of Monarch Network Capital, I'd like to host the senior management of Borussia Limited, uh, represented by Mr. Shiva Thiruka, MD CEO, Mr. Rajesh Kumar Chaudhary, whole time director, Mr. Anand Sultania, CFO, and Mr. Balesh Talapadi, Vice President, Investor Relations and Business Analyst. We will start the call with opening remarks from Mr. Shivar, and then we'll move to Q&A. Thank you, and over to you, sir. So, thank you, Rahul and uh, Mona, for hosting this call. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. It's a pleasure for the Borussia team to be interacting with you again. Borussia Limited's board approved the company's financial results for Q1 FY24 on August 14, 2023. Our results and an updated presentation have been sent to the stock exchanges, and have also been uploaded on the company's website. Consolidated revenue operations during the first quarter ended June 23 was INR 250.6 crores as against INR 216.2 crores, that is a growth of approximately 16% over the same period last year. During the quarter, the company achieved a consolidated EBITDA before exceptional and one-time items including investment income of INR 31.2 crores as against INR 29.2 crores. The EBITDA margin was 12.4% in Q1 FY24 as against 13.5% in the same period last year. TBT during Q1 FY24 was INR 10 crores as against INR 26.1 crores in Q1 FY23. Last year during Q1, we had an insurance claim resulting in an exceptional gain of 5.1 crores INR, uh, whereas this year during Q1, we had one-time expenses of INR 2.9 crores due to due diligence expenses and acquisition opportunities. So that's a total string of uh, 8 crores there. Uh, also, the investment income was is lower by about INR 2.9 crores during this quarter as compared to the quarter in the last year. Finally, depreciation and finance, finance costs are higher by about INR 10 crores, primarily due to the commissioning of the new Opal Furnace during Q4 FY23. During the quarter, Borsil recorded a console profit after tax of INR 6.4 crores as compared to 19.4 crores during the same period last year. Coming to our business-wise performance, Borosil's consumer business comprising glassware products and non-glassware products under the brand Borosil and its Opalware range under the brand Lara uh, started with a very strong uh, sales performance of INR 136.2 crores as against INR 148.7 crores during the same period last year. That is a growth of 18.4% over the same quarter last year. Sales of glassware uh, products were muted with uh, sales of INR 39.2 crores as against INR 40.7 crores, uh, so that's slightly negative. Uh, the glassware market expansion has been flat during the first quarter. Uh, this will improve going forward as we continue our efforts to enhance our product offering and uh, increase the availability of our products across uh, various channels. Non glassware products grew uh, by 19% to reach a turnover of INR 70.8 crores during this uh, period. And here we saw good growth across all our ranges. Uh, non glassware sales of Borosil brand now comprise about 64% of our revenue. Our uh, open brand Lara is 66.2 crores, that is a growth of 36.2% over the same period in the previous year. The consumer business was uh, at 15.7% as against 12.7% during the same quarter last year. We have seen some softening of direct costs such as fuel and raw material prices during the first quarter, and we expect to continue seeing margin improvements as we further scale revenues. However, as already mentioned uh, in the past, the company will continue its marketing spend behind both its brands, uh, that is Borsal and Lara, to increase consumer mind share and grow the brand digitally. And uh, as evidenced by our sales numbers, uh, I believe that uh, these spends are having uh, you know positive results. At this juncture, the focus on the company is to, is to uh, focus on the company is to expand the franchise of brand. Uh, we want to bring more users into the category of microwavables and upgrade and convert users from plastic and melamine into glass storage and openware. 
We continue to introduce new products to expand our range of offerings, such as in high-grade steel on-the-go pro- on the, on the products, uh, as well as uh, domestic appliances. With Borosan and Lara, we aim to become a brand of choice for the modern Indian kitchen for everyday use in storing, preparing, cooking, heating, and serving. Moving on to the scientific division, uh, net sales during the first quarter were of 24 were INR 74.4 crores. That is a growth of 10.2% over Q1 FI23. This sale includes uh, sales of 7.8 crores from the recently acquired process ministry business of Royal Scientific, which was uh, not uh, there in the same period last year. Our scientific product business comprises four product ranges now. That is lab glassware, lab instrumentation, that is uh, under the brand LabQuest, uh, primary glass uh, glass uh, packaging for pharma customers under the brand class pack, and the recently acquired process chemistry business. During Q1 FI24, lab glassware sales were INR 42.8 crores, that is a growth of 3.2% over Q1 FI23. LabQuest was INR 6.7 crores, that is a growth of, tw- a growth of 24.7% uh, over last year. Class pack was INR 17.1 crores, that is a decline of 17.4%. And Goal Scientific was IR 7.8 crores, which was not present in our revenues at all uh, last year. The company has identified a number of levers to ensure long term sustainable growth in the scientific division. In the lab glass consumables market, the company is pushed towards procuring, uh, towards selling on government e marketplaces in terms of attraction. This channel reduces the risk on receivables and could potentially improve order flow from the government to Borosil. Borussel also entered the rupees 110 crores uh, filter paper market, which was hitherto dominated by a single player. And we expect this to uh, continue growth in, into the future. We continue to add more customers and expand the range of solutions being offered to existing customers. And that is on the back of a wider product portfolio, which has already shared uh, four different product ranges. We are also developing an OEM business line for supply of critical items to some of our large export customers and we expect to retain a dominant position in the domestic market. Uh, export sales continue to see very good traction for lab glass as well as wires, and not only do we have uh, repeat customers, but uh, the, our wallet share for our customers also is increasing. In lab instrumentation, we will focus on increasing the range of solutions that we offer, and at the same time expand our customer base. Recent products developed and introduced by the Borsal technology team include MIDI pilot lab reactors, bottle top dispensers for hazardous acids and, uh, and as well as products in the nutrition and environment categories. Uh, we will leverage existing customer relationships in the lab glassware business to increase customer penetration for LabQuest. The team has also recently launched process systems, which gives us entry into new customer segments of API, bulk drugs, and chemical manufacturers. Uh, in pharma packaging, which is uh, at the moment uh, seeing some stress, uh, we while we did get a new businesses, um, we have a uh, loss of revenue from a few existing clients due, with, due to which sales are impacted. Several factors have contributed to the setback, including uh, substantially reduced demand for injectables, heightened competitive pressures, and pricing challenges in regulatory markets, cost reduction efforts affecting input materials, and a strategic transition to more cost-effective packaging materials for the drug price control order, that's DPCO uh, business, as well as general injectables. During Q1 FI24, the company acquired 90.17% equity in Goal Scientific through subsidiary Class Pack Limited. Borsal's SIP business will derive several synergies with this acquisition. It will add a complementary product portfolio to Borsal's existing range that can leverage Borsal's brand and strong sales and distribution network. Borsal's R&D capabilities together with Goal Scientific's specialized glass growing skills will enable the company to provide its customers with world-class made in India products. The combined operations are expected to provide deeper market penetration, entry into new markets, enhanced product offerings, and an innovative range of products. This will lead to input cost optimization for clients as well as sourcing benefits. Um, in the interim, in, the, in, the, in this initial phase, we will be investing behind setting up many systems and processes into world scientific as well as, uh, you know, hiring uh, people as needed to enhance the sales outreach, uh, which may have a short-term impact on costs. However, we believe the business would uh, perform very well, in the, even in the medium term. 
EBITDA margin for scientific uh, products during Q1 FY24 was uh, has reduced from 15.2% uh, last year to 8.5% in this quarter, Q1 FY24. Margins in scientific glassware uh, have showed improvement. However, the drop in the division's EBITDA is on account of lower margins in the class size business, uh, as well as the uh, higher costs on the LabQuest business, as well as the recently acquired uh, process chemistry business. In LabQuest, more than proportional cost increases were attributed to uh, R&D expenses and higher staff costs as we have been uh, as we continue to scale the technology team. Borsal Technology is still a nascent business and the subsidiary is in an investment phase and is currently incurring losses. As the business scales, these costs will get normalized and uh, we expect that new products which will take uh, about one to three years to stabilize should help the business uh, show uh, positive results. In class pack, EBITDA margin declined as compared to last year, primarily owing to lower sales during the period. Additionally, gross profit was lower owing to steep increase in cost of materials uh, and power that could not be passed on to the customers. Although um, we expect the material cost to reduce uh, in, in the coming periods. We see the situation to improve in the coming quarters as we are seeing more traction of new customer sale as well as reduced input costs. The new borosilicate pressware facility of 25 tons per day in Jaipur uh, is estimated to be commissioned in the third quarter of FY24. Um, the company's board of directors um, has uh, initially approved the establishment of a borosilicate 3.3 expansion tubing furnace at the company's plant in Bharuj, Gujarat. The decision aimed to enable in-house manufacturing of glass tubing that is a key raw material used in the production of the company's scientific products. The goal was to decrease reliance on external supplies for the structural input material. However, as we uh, continuously assess the company's expansion strategies, considering factors such as project cost effectiveness, time considerations, and availability of other options, uh, the decision to proceed with setting up this in-house student project has been put on hold. Uh, the decision will not impact the co company's ongoing operations and will continue to, as, as we will continue to procure the required tubing from external suppliers as we have been doing for the past many years. In previous communications, we detailed our intention to reorganize the company's operations into two distinct publicly traded entities through a comprehensive arrangement scheme. The appointed date for the scheme is 1st April 2022. Post receipt of observation letters from the stock exchanges and approvals from equity shareholders and creditors, the company has filed its petition with NCLT for seeking its approval on the said scheme. Uh, the said petition has been admitted for final hearing, which is now scheduled for 1st September 23. However, the timelines of this step uh, are not in our control, and we'll keep you informed of the progress in this regard. Overall, we maintain a strong sense of optimism regarding the uh, medium-term potential within the consumer business. While there may be occasional periods of modest growth, coupled with customer uh, consumer caution, we anticipate robust expansion in our sectors driven by favorable long-term trends. Our primary focus will be on introducing innovative new products, enhancing customer experience, and improving efficiency throughout our market channels and supply chain. Additionally, we will invest in strengthening our brand presence. In the scientific segment, we are definitely in a growth phase uh, with addition of various new product portfolios in, in, our, in our basket. We plan to capitalize on our leading position in lab glassware to ensure um, consistent growth with these new product introductions. Simultaneously, we aim to foster the growth of the instrumentation business through LabQuest uh, and expand our pharma packaging offering via ClassPack. And in the in the medium term, we can we continue to anticipate double digit revenue growth for this business. Uh, with that being said, I would like to now throw the, uh, throw the floor open to questions. Thank you. Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on their touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. The first question is from the line of Rahul Dani from Monarch Network Capital. Please go ahead. Yeah, congratulations, Shiva, on a strong revenue growth. Uh, just a couple of questions from my end. Uh, specifically in the Opel, where you know, uh, you know, we have seen competition report very uh, subdued growth, and we have reported very extremely strong growth. So, I just want to understand how the market is 
And in terms of margins, uh, you know, our margin expansion has come in at the prime rate because of open red. And where do you see this stabilizing? Uh, yeah, thanks, Rahul. Well, I can't comment on competition, uh, but we also have seen, uh, you know, relatively slow growth. I mean, we had anticipated even higher revenue growth than what we achieved. Um, but uh, unfortunately, I think the market has not been that strong in the first quarter, and I think that's the case across consumer product companies. Um, but um, the, you know, uh, we, we continue putting efforts behind all our channels, and I believe that our our strategy to broad base our Various channels uh, has resulted in, uh, in you know, in in what I would call still very good numbers. Um, on the on the point of margins, uh, yeah, the consumer division uh, margin expansion is definitely driven by higher margins at uh, Alara uh, facility, um, and and uh, as we see more uh, capacity utilization, I think the margins will continue uh, increasing. Um, so, so we are we are quite positive. Although, frankly said, we do hope that uh, consumer sentiment picks up uh, in the during the Diwali period, which is just upcoming now. Sure. Uh, and secondly, on the scientific division, like we do understand that you've been spending on the recent transaction. So, do you expect margins to kind of be uh, in these levels for the next couple of quarters, and maybe uh, pick up from next year? No, I think uh, scientific uh, margins should pick up from this quarter itself uh, because uh, they, they ha- there were specific also reasons why we had higher costs in the first quarter. So I don't see them uh, then them at this level. We, we definitely see uh, we should come back to more or less uh, consistent levels of margin as we had in the last year. However, to see margin improvement compared to last year, I think, yes, uh, this will take a, maybe another year or so because uh, um, I think our, our postal technologies business is is one of the reasons the margins are low, like basically higher cost than what we're selling. Uh, I mean, there's a net loss in that in that uh, in that division. But I think, given what we're seeing in terms of traction of our instrumentation range, I think from next year we should be profitable there as well. And so that drag on the margin, which is currently being faced from there, should should go away. And class pack also is a drag on the margin, uh, which is um, we, which also should uh, improve because we, we've got. I would say three, four very strong customers have been added into our kitty. Now it takes time for them to kind of, um, you know, scale up uh, operations. So uh, in th- that should also happen in the next, you know, one or two quarters. So I, I, I think margins will bounce back. Uh, but to see substantial improvement in margin compared to the year before, I think we'll have to wait for next year for that. All right. Uh, thank you so much. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Aditi Bhattet with Nivesha Investment Advisors. Please go ahead. Hello. Uh, hello. You are audible, ma'am. You may proceed. With yeah, you. hi. Good afternoon, sir. Uh, so, um, regarding the capacity expansion for the press fair facility and the class pack, uh, I wanted to understand the status of the same. Uh, I couldn't follow that in the commentary. So, first, my uh, question is regarding the KFA. Yeah. Yes. So, as far as class pack is concerned, I think more or less whatever was the capex plan, it's already deployed. Unfortunately, uh, the capex has come in at, at a time when demand is slow, so it's kind of sitting idle, frankly. Uh, the, our capacity rate is much lower than we had anticipated, so that's uh, a negative for us. Uh, and and uh, like I said, we're working on new customer additions, which we already have achieved some success. And assuming that these customers come in, we should be able to start utilizing that capex. So capex cycle for class pack is more or less finished. Um, a couple of you know things will be added in the second half of this year, which are already let's say accounted for, um, but nothing new. And as far as uh, the press fair facility is concerned, uh, we had uh, you know some delays because of delay in uh, in, in shipment of machines, especially from Europe, and uh, you know the supply chain issues, which were very very strong last year, while reduced, are still not uh, completely uh, you know gone. So we, we expect that production facility to start in the third quarter of this uh, financial year, sometime in the third quarter. Okay. So, so like, when we see the class pack division, so uh, margin-wise, uh, if I see the affected margin, can I also attribute it that we have already done the CAPEX and that involves an amount of CAPEX expenses too, other than the raw material price increase? Yeah, of course. The depreciation has gone up because of the CAPEX. Sorry, is that your question? 
uh, the same thing. So the margin that is affected in the class pack division is it only is on the account of raw material price increase or because the capex is also completed and like the employee expenses and everything we you have already deployed yeah. for the same division. Yeah, so that's that's right. So what's happened is uh, what a the capex was deployed. B uh, our fixed costs, which are let's say employee costs, uh, energy costs, and a lot a lot, lot of sense of fixed costs. The fixed costs, uh, you have the reverse of operating leverage happening because your your sales have degrown, and therefore uh, to those costs which are all built into the system for higher sales growth are actually now spread over a lower sales base, and therefore uh, our our fixed costs as a percentage of overall revenues have increased substantially, which also destroys your margin profile. So, and these are costs which are not easy to, you know, you don't want to take a short-term decision to cut these costs because uh, once your sales comes back, then you know, if you, you need those skilled people, you need them. So you, you, you know, you, you have to, you have to live with it for a few months till you get the sales back. So yes, uh, you're, you're right. The margin cut in scientific division is uh, a lot, so the attributable to two main reasons. One was the higher costs in class pack associated with the higher capex and uh, the general lower sales. And second is uh, on borsal technologies again because of the uh, more investment in in skilled people to help uh, let's say drive uh, new product development. Okay, okay. And so uh, for the class pack division, the revenue mix for the domestic and export market would be. Yeah, so actually that's one of the silver linings for us, which uh, our our revi- our export sales have actually been increasing every month, month on month, year on year. So, uh, in fact, this year I think exports will be more than 30% of our revenues, uh, which okay. which three years ago was hardly three, four, five percent. So, um, uh, so that's a that's a silver lining for us, and we are working harder to see whether we can take that up to maybe 35, 40 uh, percent, even higher than that. So that's uh, that's something because the export customers are paying us for that capex that we run for those camera inspection uh, systems and for all the. Um, uh, for all the you know value that uh, value addition that we're doing, so uh, that's certainly something that we we see with optimism. Okay, okay. And lastly, sir, when do you see the raw material prices to stabilize for this division? See, raw material prices have uh, will reduce this from this quarter on, uh, and then they will be stable only. I don't think they will increase further. Um, so yeah, from from next quarter on, I think you should see uh, an improvement or reduction in raw material prices. Okay, yeah, that's all from my side. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Priyank Chedda with Valum Capital. Please go ahead. Uh, yeah, hi. Thanks for the opportunity. Uh, so my question is on the Opal where Can you elaborate? Uh, you did mention the your broad-based challenge strategy has resulted due to even immune to the macro consumer slowdown that we are witnessing. So if you can elaborate that uh, further, uh, along with few data points on to how, what is your revenue contribution across the channels, uh, which channel has led to growth or degrowth? Uh, thank you. That's my first question. So frankly, if you don't share the, the channel-wide data, and I would not like to do that uh, at, this, at this point. Uh, however, uh, we, uh, you know, consistently maintain that our people are our strength, and we have... Uh, you know, we have a very strong sales team across all the channels, whether it be general trade, modern trade, you know, CSD, uh, even exports, uh, our institutional sales, uh, 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 of course, e-commerce, my, my portal. So, uh, across all these channels, we have very strong teams which we have worked on and developed and also had to uh, have lower overall margins in the business because of the higher manpower cost. But at some point, that that is... Uh, you know, kind of paying back for us. So that combined with our marketing expenses um, have, in my opinion, driven the sales growth. But uh, unfortunately, I'm not at liberty to share the uh, the channel-wise numbers or growth. But I can say that the growth is very broad-based, and I can't say that there's any specific order or specific, uh, let's say, specific channel or region, in fact, even, which has contributed uh, disproportionately to the growth that that we see. Which is, which is all good news for us. Yeah. Would, it, would this be relevant across the industry or would it be only for you if you can uh, help us with that? I mean, look, people are relevant across every industry. So, yes, it's relevant across the industry. So, um, I, I I think, uh, yes, it's, it, it is relevant to every industry that if you have if you have good people and, uh, you know, they, you, you, they, 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 uh, they have a good, uh, you know, they, they know what to do, then 
normally they get the job done. So um, that's that's in my opinion that's what I'm seeing. I can't give you any further. I mean, I data on that subject. Sorry, I was referring to uh, the channel growth or the broad based growth that you have witnessed. Uh, is the same trend across the industry, or is only specific to Boro Silicon and SP? So, uh, sorry, I don't pay too much. I mean, I have general idea of what's happening, but I don't pay too much attention to uh, competition numbers. So, uh, I think you're in a better place to kind of check that. What does it mean? No so, uh, one more query uh, on your presentation, where you mentioned the industry size, where Opal yeah. market size has, is around 900 crores as per your presentation. It's the same size that uh, you would have you had mentioned in September 2021. So despite uh, it's been estimated to be growing at 20%, uh, I mean, uh, can you help us with? Uh, I, yeah, with, uh, I, I think I think we may have made a mistake there. Maybe we have to revise that. It's definitely gone up no for sure. No problem. Yeah. If you can help us with what, what are the industry dynamics in Opal World right now? How they they are shaping up? Any sense on uh, who? Is, I mean, uh, are the organizations gaining more share versus unorganized? If you can help me on the industry dynamics. See. Uh, Unorganized versus organized in Opal, there's hardly any unorganized in Opal. However, I've, I've uh, repeatedly said this, I don't consider the market to be Opal. The market is dinnerware. Okay. When you go out to buy uh, a plate, you're not thinking I want to buy an Opal plate or when I say you, I mean anybody. Okay. They want to buy a, a dinner set or they want to buy a cup or a saucer or a, or a mug. So when they go to buy a product, I don't think they necessarily think of which category or rather which material to buy. So, uh, we should look at the overall size of the dinnerware market, which is multi-thousand crores, maybe more than 10,000 crores, because you have to add steel there, you have to add plastic there, you have to add bone china, and so on and so on, okay? So, uh, if we we have to get a share of that pie, not a share of the opal pie, and uh, that has been the consistent messaging from our point of view, and uh, I, I think if we look upon that as a market opportunity, then, uh, then we probably, as an industry, we can succeed. Uh, not individually, but as an industry, we can succeed. So, I would urge you to look at the entire industry uh, of dinnerware or tableware, servingware, whatever you may wish to call it, and uh, and see what what uh, let's say share people can take from that. Got it. Uh, clear enough. Uh, in one of the presentation, you have, one of the slides you have mentioned that you have gained share. In the openware market, uh, if you can help us quantify, uh, if possible, and uh, in general, if you can uh, comment on how has been the competitive landscape uh, in such a bloody scenario, are the players uh, embarking on to more discounts uh, within the channels or not? I have not seen much discounting, frankly. I think all the players are very mature and uh, they are extremely able and uh, very very that is strong. Uh, all the players uh, in, in this Opal business. So I don't see discounting as a challenge. I, I think uh, in general, like I said, and again I mentioned that we have a, we have a broad-based channel strategy which which others may or may not have and therefore we get rich from it. This also costs us. It costs us by way of higher advertising costs and it costs us by way of higher manpower costs which is uh, a cost that we pay and uh, therefore that impacts our margins. So while our growth has been good, but I, as you as you know that our budget profile is not as good, so it's a cost benefit thing, and we we choose this way, we choose this route. Uh, somebody else may choose some other route. I'm not neither is right or wrong. It's just a question of philosophy. Um, yeah. Got it. Got it. Clear enough. Uh, and, and just the last question on uh, has your second furnace uh, started contributing to your sales in the current quarter? Uh, earlier you had guided that uh, you would be looking out to. Selling off, uh, selling out almost of your 60, 70 percent of the capacity in the current uh, year. Uh, given the sluggish scenario, would you want to revise that guidance? Uh, look, the, like I said before, the, the key is Diwali. Uh, we are still, last year we were, we are sold out and we have grown 36%. We have not cut prices. So you can assume that volume growth is 36% or 40% in that range. Okay. So in principle, uh, for of the second one is we're selling that percentage of our uh, of our capacity versus the 60 percent that we had really hoped to sell. So um, um, so I, I, let's let's wait for another quarter. Let's see how Diwali goes. Then I can comment further. But hard, right now it's hard for me to give guidance further guidance on this. Got it. Thanks a lot for answering all of all my questions. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you.
Ladies and gentlemen, if you wish to ask a question, you may please press star and one. The next question is from the line of Pranay Roop Chatterjee from BCMPL. Please go ahead. Good afternoon. Uh, am I audible? Yes, yes please. Yeah. Uh, my first question is with respect to the openware division. Uh, I think the festive season this year is uh, beginning sometime end of August, uh, if I'm not wrong. It will go up to sometime second week of October. So, uh, uh, on a QOQ basis, uh, should we expect uh, improvement in your openware sales? Uh, if you can comment on how you are seeing July and August progressing. I'm sorry, I can't give comment. I can't, I can't talk anything about this quarter. Only whatever is published. I think, as per my understanding, as a law. So sorry about that. Got it. Got it. Uh, with respect to glassware uh, division, uh, you had said your uh, new funding will come in in Q3. Uh, I think uh, I asked this question last quarter as well, and you had said uh, you would have better idea closer to the date. Uh, any information you can share regarding uh, how much cost upfronting can happen because of the new fund is uh, in terms of incremental cost getting built uh, and in terms of you would also have some benefit because raw material produced in house will be cheaper than getting imported. So how would those dynamics sort of play out uh, and how do you vision them playing out over the first two to three quarters of the furnace uh, being active? Yeah, yeah, look, this is a, um, actually for me, the biggest uh, threat or the concern is, uh, this, this furnace because, uh, uh, as, as you see, our glassware sales have been flat, okay? And right. which is not a good sign for us. Uh, that's yeah. not a good sign for us because, uh, we definitely need, uh, to sell much higher volume once we have our own production. The volume from that production is like three, four times what we're selling. Today. Yes. So, our biggest challenge, in my opinion, for our consumer division, everything else is on track, in my opinion. The biggest challenge for us is how do we sell three, four times the volume of the press production when that production starts. So that's something, frankly, we are working on, and I can't say we have an answer to that. Um, okay. So, yeah, that, that's something that uh, I would say we, we really need to uh, maybe think something different or get a, get, you know, maybe some out-of-box ideas because that, that's, not a, that's not a problem that we've, that we've been able to solve yet. Got it, got it, got it. Uh, but if you could still, uh, in case you have had internal discussions, uh, if you could share one or two levers that you would have to, you know, get that additional uh, volume, because you would need to gain yeah. share uh, in this yeah, market. Look, uh, we have, so, I, so the basic, the most, the most basic lever is product range. Okay. Right now, we offer maybe 30, 35 SKUs in in that spec category. In our new product line or in our new furnace, which will, what we what will come on online soon. Uh, we have almost 85 SKUs that we plan to launch. So, oh. so the point is, the point is that, uh, you want to give customers choices. When the customer has a choice and they're likely to choose something within that range. When you give them fewer choices, then they may choose something totally out of the range. They may not choose that range at all. So, I, I would say the range of products is the number one, let's say, lever that we can pull, that we plan to pull when we, when we uh, launch this, this range. And that should definitely give us better volume. The number two lever is higher exports because uh, of China plus one. We we have, uh, now it's also a chicken and egg situation because we have, we've con we've been contacted by most of the big uh, overseas uh, let's say department stores who are interested in the product, but since we have production, they can't approve us and so on. So it's a little bit of a chicken and egg situation. But uh, so that should be a number two lever, and a number three lever would be uh, definitely uh, uh, pricing, which is. Uh, which, which would need to be attractive to make the product within reach of the everyday consumer. So these are the three levers that we hope to be able to pull once the uh, production comes. And that we hope would help, help us uh, drive uh, the, the volume growth in the business. So uh, interesting point you mentioned the last one. How much would the price in your view would, uh, how much would the price need to reduce uh, to, you know, sort of materially expand this market, right? Because one of the reasons that the glassware is Adoption is low is the price right? So, how much percentage would you expect that number to be? It, it maybe it. I think it will be different product by product. Uh, but like for example, glass lunch boxes, I think already are quite competitive in general because you have a broad range uh, of products available and the competition is more or less a similar pricing. But something like a servingware, so something like a servingware where we are outpriced when you compare to other categories, there you may need to have a 15-20% reduction. So it may range from anywhere from nothing, you don't really do anything, to 
a 15 20 uh, percent reduction uh, somewhere in that range would probably be uh, you know the the, the right price point Got it. Uh, so my last question regarding SIP margins. Uh, I think in Q4, uh, EBITDA margins reported was around 22%. Uh, that obviously has reduced uh, because of the reasons you mentioned. Uh, should we expect Q2 to be more of a transitory quarter uh, where you are know, trying to figure out things and you know going back to that 18-20% levels, which might come back only in Q3 and Q4? Is that a fair statement? See, uh, see SIP in general ha- is a uh, is a seasonal business. Q4 is always strong. Okay. So one should not look at, uh, you know, either you can't look at preceding quarter and next quarter margins, but the quarters themselves are completely different. So I saw that our margins have fallen from 22% to whatever, you know, 8.5% as, as they have. That's not the way to look at it. Uh, to say, uh, I mean, at the end of this year, can we be closer to last year what we did? I think with the exception of Q1, which has not been very good, um, I, I think that's a safe, safe statement to say in general, okay? Um, but to again, like I think I answered someone before, that the expansion of SIP margins will probably start happening from next year when our uh, our to those two areas where we are today in a negative situation. One is the courses technologies business, and the second is class pack. Those should start picking up again because those are actively dragging our margins um, down, and both for separate reasons. One is for a sales reason, and the other is for higher costs, which are not yet kind of absorbed by the product range that we have. Understood, sir. Got it. All clear. Uh, thanks for answering my questions. Thanks. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Dhruv Kashyap, an individual investor. Please go ahead. Yeah, good afternoon and thanks a lot for <clears throat> taking my question. Uh, the first question was on the Borusil consumerware division, I mean, the sort of really exciting part of the business. Uh, given that we are currently sort of operating in a fairly flared up consumer inflation environment where there is a tendency of the consumer to deprioritize discretionary spending and so on and so forth, and the fact that I guess one way to mitigate it is to sort of put in more newer exciting offerings in the various categories we are operating and uh, categories, uh, new categories as well, and the dynamics that earlier we were procuring some, manufacturing some, some was coming from China. We were to risk mitigate that and sort of bring it a lot more into India. Uh, could you just sort of share some color, including the new categories or the new launches that we are getting into? I mean, just give some idea of, uh, given that we are entering the festive season, that how are we placed on uh, on the consumer wear business, including the build-up? Okay, so Dhruv, I just firstly, I'd like to clarify your first statement. Uh, I don't think consumer is more or less exciting than scientific. Both businesses for us are extremely exciting, okay? And we uh, we love both the businesses and we believe both have incredibly interesting opportunities for us ahead and also will should help uh, return, you know, uh, the returns of both the businesses should be uh, more than more than what uh, you would otherwise anticipate in a, you know, you know, uh, in a risk adjusted way. So, uh, uh, yeah, just to make sure that I'm clear, both the businesses to us are very exciting, not just one or one, one or the other. The, the, coming to your next question on consumer business, uh, we have very much, uh, uh, or let's say very well developed, at least for our size and scale, um, product management teams. And these teams are continuously going to uh, visit end customers. They're visiting our channel partners and uh, they, uh, they figure out what really is the need of the market. It's very bottom up and not top down at all. And they have complete autonomy to uh, drive new introductions and to drive uh, our own, whether it's our own factories, whether it's our supplier plant, to drive them to make new products. And, um, you know, we, as, as management, we try and get out of the way because we, once we get in the way, we actually slow down that process. So, uh, you know, uh, I get lots of complaints from my mother because she keeps telling me that I have no idea what products are being introduced in Borussia. And my answer to her is, that even I don't know what's going on in terms of new product introduction. That, that's the pace that we, I think we launched 109 SKUs last year. So that's, it's a pretty, you know, rapid, say, uh, product launch compared, again, this is for our size and scale of operation. And, uh, I think that's more or less continuing for this, this quarter as well. And, uh, you, you will continue to see new products. We could check our website, myborsal.com. You know, you, I think you'll get a sense of what's, what's going on over there. And, um, 
uh, you know, they're different products for online, they're different products for trade, different for LFS. So it's hard to kind of uh, boil all of this down into some metric, but we, we see a lot of engagement from our end customers with us, and that's how we drive product development. Yeah, thanks for that, uh, uh, Sugar. I think lots in common. Uh, my sort of mother keeps questioning my judgment as well. But I think uh, uh, on the FIP part of the business, uh, uh, just to understand this, see, there are a lot of uh, parts to it, right? So there is a lab quest instrumentation. There is a, a, a sort of a, uh, the instrument, uh, uh, so, sorry, the, 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 the test tube beaker, the sector, you know, that a part of the business. Then there is the class pack. Uh, part of the business, and now there is Goel. So, for a fairly small revenue, there's a lot of complexities in moving parts. Uh, how are you seeing this play out? Because if you start investing in all four, and you land up in a situation where there's a soft demand environment, especially given who you cater to as a customer, etc., uh, given that large part of it's B2B where you might not even have pricing power, uh, I'm just, uh, uh, to me, just help me demystify this because it sounds very complicated. Yeah, so complexity is our friend. Okay. That's the first point. The more complex it is, the uh, the fewer people that can do it. And therefore, if we have complexity and we can solve for the complexity, then you should make better returns than than otherwise, right? Otherwise, if it was simple, everyone would do it. So yes, you are. So, so that point is absolutely correct. The SIP business is definitely complex with many SKUs. The second point is price, except for pharma packaging, which is uh, let's say which has a different dynamic. The other three verticals which would be uh, the glassware, the instrumentation, and uh, the process systems business. Here, actually, the pricing, uh, it's not clear that the companies that buy from us have the pri- have all the pricing power. We also hold a substantial pricing power. We have a big moat, and that is a product range, because these, this is a C-class item for most of those companies uh, in terms of their annual purchase. And because it's a C-class item, uh, the focus is more on making sure the quality is correct so that they don't have complaints and also that they get delivery on time. So if we manage that, you know, whatever, few thousand SKUs, and we can deliver this across the country within, uh, let's call it, one day. Say, I think I, I, the last I checked, we're delivering about 96% of our SKUs within 24 hours to the end customer. Then they don't want to, I mean, even if they save money on it, they save nothing. They save like pennies uh, or like their total spend on lab, all this stuff put together in a year would be three, four, five percent of their overall spend. So even if they say five percent of that, it doesn't bother them. And on the flip side, if they get bad quality or they it gets delayed by five days, then they uh, they're much more valuable experiments. Their costs, which are the fixed costs of those scientists who are doing all the experimentation, all of that goes for a toss. So. I, I don't really think that they have the pricing power, but I, I do believe, I, but it's different for pharma packaging because in pharma packaging, they're supplying a raw material. And raw material is not a C-class item, it's an A-class item for the pharma company. So that's why there's a slight difference in the, in the, in these four businesses and not to be looked upon all in, uh, under one, say, umbrella. Um, and I, I think the coming to demand environment, I think India's R&D spend is going to go up. Pharma, biz, uh, you know, generic production in India is going to go up. API production is going to go up. Um, so I, I, I think we're at the front end of that curve and, uh, uh, that's, now that's a business bet we've taken that the demand will go up. Obviously, if the demand goes down, then we're in trouble. But, uh, I, I mean, this is a business which is fairly stable, uh, and I, I don't see any shocks in from the demand side or any something, a new technology which can totally replace you coming up very quickly on the demand side. So, yeah, but of course there's a risk. Every business has a risk and this has also that risk. It's sort of exceptionally well explained, and thanks a lot for that. I think my last question, very quick one, is that, um, you know, given that we have come out of a slightly challenged quarter on, let's say, the SIP end of the business, uh, including the margin, and we are entering a very sort of fervent festivity period, because correct me if I'm wrong, in your line of business, you start loading the channels or trade in July, August, September, or in October, November, yeah. December, sort of the valley. So given that, okay. how are you seeing this play out in uh, the, you know, the July, August, September, October, November, December? I'm not asking for forward guidance, but I'm asking for your expertise and your stewardship in helping us lay people understand that how is the lay of the land looking? See, we, we can do our job, which is to get the products uh, um, manufactured or, or sourced uh, and, and 
talk it up and then we go to the customer and ask for orders i mean at the moment uh, i'm not seeing anything uh, either extremely exciting or extremely depressing it's kind of neutral um and but it's still you know uh, this this year diwali is in november not not october if, I, if i'm not mistaken sometime in the uh, second week of november so diwali is a bit later than normal so i think the festive uh, the festive uh, the demand should start picking up just about now or maybe in the first half of september for a kind of uh, uh, you know september, end of end of august september october kind of uh, festive season um so i i can't say there's anything you know dramatically exciting or anything dramatically depressing things are still uh, on on the let's say uh, very much balanced and uh, i think the next 30 to 45 days we'll have a very good sense but it's a little bit too early this year just because of the wali being too late uh, meaning being later well uh, thanks a lot uh, shivar and i sort of thank you and uh, senior mr keruka for your excellent stewardship for both the companies renewables and limited over the years and keep up the great work thank you so much thank you thank you participants who wish to ask questions please press star and 1 the next question is from the line of shriram r an individual investor please go ahead yeah thank you for the opportunity uh, my question uh, is on the segmental margins i mean is it possible to disclose the uh, you know segmental margins in the uh, consumer division like opal ware glassware and non glassware i'm sorry we don't do that sorry i'm sorry we, we don't do that we don't do that okay so so okay so uh, coming from uh, you know the competition side you know the competition you know uh, is uh, reporting a higher margin so i'm just trying to understand where are we heading in terms of our uh, you know just want your guidance in terms of margin trajectory i mean yeah. where do we see our margins you know 5 years from now that is what that is what that is what i want to understand frankly 5 years very difficult i i we have uh, if you go through our previous transcripts so this or this discussion has been had many times and i can just i can repeat those points number 1 uh we spent higher on advertising and sales promotion by 7 8% compared to our, comp- our competitors so that's one of the reasons why our margin of the consumer business are lower the number two point is that we have uh, larger teams deployed for um for uh, and therefore manpower cost also slightly higher than what our competitors would be the third point is that our scale is we have built or we are building to build a business which may be have a 1000 2000 crore kind of revenue number and therefore uh, many of our let's say uh, fixed costs are higher than our competition uh, finally especially in opal business because we are relatively newer entrants our selling prices may be 2 3 4% lower than the uh, competition so uh, these are all these factors contribute towards a lower margin of course uh, we have to look at the business margin in different ways what we manufacture we look at from a return on capital employed perspective or a ebitda margin and and then a return on capital employed when we look at our other business say the stuff that we are not manufacturing but we are designing and then buying or sourcing there we uh, absolute margin is not really the relevant uh, point to look at it's more the rosy because uh, your capital deployment is much lower um uh, we don't have plant and machinery it's only working capital um so our our targeted rosy uh, is about 24% uh, which which uh, for this division and while we're not there yet i, I think in the next 2 3 years i think we should hit, hit that number assuming we can satisfactorily sell uh, whatever production that we manufacture so uh, if if we hit a 24% rosy on our consumer business in the next couple of years i'd be i'd be i'd be uh, quite satisfied with that result. Thank you so much. Got it. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Participants to ask a question you may please press star and 1. The next question is from the line of Vedik from Monarch Network Capital. Please go ahead. Um hi sir congratulations on the set of numbers. I just wanted to understand what would be your advertisement cost for the quarter in terms of percentage. um it's about 7 to 8% this quarter from mom uh, rajesh maybe you can correct me if i'm wrong yeah second person is the right yes yeah, sure okay so uh, 7% okay and one last question um for the whole year uh, 
uh, where do you see your revenues going? Like, at what percent do you see um, the business would grow? And for FY twenty four as well. Look, uh, this is I can't answer for this year. In in principle, we give a we give a guidance for consumer division to grow fifteen to twenty percent bigger, and uh, I think we can stick to that for this year as well. And um, as far as um, the scientific division is concerned, we give a guidance from ten to twelve percent, and I, I believe we'll stick to that guidance as well. So nothing changes the guidance uh, in either direction so far. Okay, sir. Thank you. That's it from my side. Thank you. Uh, we have no further questions. I would now like to hand the conference over to the management for closing comments. Over to you, sir. Thanks. Uh, well, thank you for all your questions. Really appreciate it. Uh, thank you for your interest in Borsal. Uh, as as a company, we are, like I said, extremely bullish about both our divisions, both the growth profiles the, and the margin profiles as they evolve. We are definitely in investment mode uh, on the science on the on the consumer side. There's capex as well as a lot of expenses on the uh, on the marketing side. On the scientific side, there is acquisitions and there is also uh, a lot of expense in product development. Um, so we are in that phase of our journey. So um, I do expect a little bit of volatility on, on margins in the short run, but in the in the medium to long run, I believe that these businesses will uh, certainly uh, yield more than a fair return on the capital employed, and uh, that should. Uh, you know, yield well, uh, work well for us. Um, we're, we're building really uh, a business to scale, uh, and I'm uh, I'm really proud of our team that's you know dedicating 24 hours of their life uh, every day to do this. So, and thank you to all our investors and to those who are you know tracking and interested in our business. Thank you. Thank you. On behalf of Monarch Network Capital, that concludes this conference. Thank you for joining us. You may now disconnect your lines.